வணக்கம் குட் ஈவினிங் குட் ஆப்டர்நூன் வணக்கம் வந்தனம் எல்லாருக்கும் தமிழ் சுவைக்கு வெல்கம் பண்றேன் திஸ் இஸ் ஆர் ஜே சுதா என்னோட கூட ஆர் ஜே வெங்கியும் இருக்காரு அலாங் வித் அஸ் இன் ஆர் ஸ்டுடியோஸ் இஸ் டூ டாக்டர்ஸ் டூ வெரி வெரி ஸ்பெஷல் டாக்டர்ஸ் ஹியர் டு சேவ் அவர் லைஃப் யுவர் லைஃப் எவ்ரிபடிஸ் லைஃப் இன் திஸ் வேர்ல்ட் திஸ் இஸ் டாக்டர் நாரஸ் பட் எம்டி எஃப்ஏசிபி அண்ட் அலாங் வித் ஹிம் இஸ் டாக்டர் குசும் பட் ஹூ இஸ் ஆல்சோ அ டாக்டர் பிஏ பிஏ அண்ட் பிஹெச்டி அண்ட் வி ஆர் ஹியர் டு டாக் அபவுட் ஹார்ட் டிசீசஸ் in deshi indians update 2020 as you all know dr naras but was in our, t- in our, in our show a um, couple of months back we are here for an update we are all here to give us a uh, give us an update on uh, he is here to update us on what we spoke several months back and also what has happened in the past few months and anything else that we need to know and anybody else who has joined us new for the first time we are here he is here to talk about that and dr kusum has extremely specialized uh, specialization in her own field about anger management weight management etc we are here to talk about that welcome to the show dr naras but and dr kusum ji thank you thank you yeah how are you doing They're good thank you. No, thank you you're all dressed up in red is that just a coincidence or what and mr venki rj venki is also dressed up in red and we are all 49er fans <laughs> yes there is one reason but the most important reason is uh, yesterday february 7 okay is the 16th anniversary of american heart association requiring hmm. all women to think of red and wear red because women ah. uh, one out of every three women will die of heart attack and heart disease much more than cancer or any other disease oh my god wow. and that is why it is for awareness <laughs> february is the month of heart disease awareness february 7th <coughs> is specific for women and we should wear red and we are wearing red for that reason honoring yeah. women honoring women exactly we are we are honoring women in multiple ways there is valentines day coming up That's which is right. all red That's right. <laughs> and uh, you know men are already uh, shivering and uh, yes. you know ge- getting ready lining up for the bouquet shops and uh, jewelry shops and all that so uh, <laughs> right. so today uh, nerkale uh, today we're going to be talking uh, with dr naras but as well as dr kusum ji uh, dr kusum uh, but uh, d- uh, wide variety of topics and also we're going to be intertwining this topic with a lot of romantic songs and all that how about we start off this uh, show with a nice um, romantic song from the roja movie uh, let's start with this and then let's get deep dive into the dis- uh, heart diseases in the deshi indian population nerkale welcome back to tamil suvai on radio mirchi 1310 uh, rajesh rj sudha pesugiren enoda kuda rj venki irkar and also we along with us in the studios we have uh, dr naras but Uh, md fcp and along with uh, along with him we have uh, dr kusum but um, a pa phd uh, with lot of specialization including anger management especially for people who have lost uh, who people of hardcore 49ers fan who think uh, 49ers have, should have won that game yes. how they could have how they could how they could have controlled that anger and what what are the physical uh, results of that anger anything else how could uh, how could a, a president who could have gotten away with such an acquittal and such a so many ang- ang- angry things have got uh, have gotten place in this past, past week what are the side effects of uh, such anger in your body those are things that uh, dr kusum is going to be talking about today uh, ladies and gentlemen you are listening to radio mirchi 1310 this is tamil suvai this is rj sudha and along with me is rj venki uh, in the program ninga neriya neriya valiya kekalam ninga radio la ninga ketirukinga na 1310 am radio va ninga tune in pannalam adhe samayam ninga facebook valiya ninga in the program kekkeringa na facebook.com slash rj sudha valiya ninga kekalam or facebook.com slash tamil dot suvai t-a-m-i-z-h dot s-u-v-a-i adhe valiya kekalam tavarthu ninga if you have a smartphone of course if you have uh, if you have a very if you are a simple uh, web, simple smart smartphone user you can always uh, go to uh, www.radiomirchi1310.com otherwise uh, always you can have an app ungalku smartness konjam oru alavu jaastiya irundadunaka you can always download radio mirchi 1310 am app and then download it via apple store or google play app so download panni you can use that and then use the play or pause button to or to play or pause or whatever you want to do so that is it that's how you can listen of course engalukku uh, uh, we have a landline here if you have any questions for dr uh, uh, naras but or dr kusum but you can always call us the phone number here on the studio is 408 934 1310 again uh, nearly we have plenty of people who just 
pass away in the sleep like for example very recently less than 2 or 3 months back uh, we had uh, kaiser permanente ceo who was just found uh, dead in a sleep right yes yeah? and uh, and then recently we, there was another sports person who just died of cardiac people who work out like crazy who are very very fit otherwise who just die of cardiac arrest like that and very young people who are just barely touch 40 and who are otherwise fit who eat for healthy and all everything else they keep healthy but they just die very early very untimely uh, very untimely health that uh, timely death so we are going to be talking about so many t- such topics that uh, naras but will be touching about um, And, and we don't why is the reason especially for uh, deshi indians why have, why is that and how can we prevent that there are many many such topics that we are going to be talking about and of course uh, in, in, in this next friday this friday is going to be valentine's day valentine's day pati nariya nariya paattukal nanga adiki adiki vechirukom roja paattu ayara man our first movie adoda nanga introduce panirukom in show so welcome to the show again dr naras bhat and dr kusum bhat Thank you. Yeah, T- tell yeah. us about yourself, uh, about your background. Uh, uh, you, how I know you both. You know you had you originally from India and then you came here for your higher studies and etc. Uh, when did you come here? How many years back did you come here? That will tell us how old we are. <laughs> 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 that's fine. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. So tell us about what you're going to be talking about today. Okay let me uh, give an uh, for your listeners let me give you a preview of what you're going to hear mm-hmm. and then uh, th- we are going to cover systematically very good mm-hmm. what is heart disease mm-hmm. why and how we desi indians have the highest heart disease in this world and then top 3 ways you can calculate mm-hmm. your risk for heart disease and top 5 blood tests you can get done to get to really evaluate your risk through blood test and also monitor the response treatment that and top 5 tests for plaque presence by the way heart disease is you know the risk plaque and the event there mm. are three things mm. you get tested for each ah. the risk evaluation plaque then a test for the plaque and then a test <laughs> for an impending or near coming heart attack so the test for a plaque we will cover five different tests and then a test for inflammation were well, four different tests they are blood tests mm. and then finally we will look into the solution of five lifestyle modification to prevent and reverse heart disease excellent excellent okay and then i will be covering and uh, my goal is to talk to you about what is anger where the anger we all know what from. anger is i mean <laughs> the past one week yeah. we know i mean uh, we yes. have been subjected to a lot of anger this yeah that's know. right <laughs> and what is the iceberg model of anger ah, and what is anger in and anger out mm-hmm. and uh, what is the difference between trait anger and the state anger wow. and how does the anger kill you and what is the side effect or what are the causes or uh, what's the effect of uh, anger um, on heart and uh, how to uh, uh, how to reverse or control anger and what are the solutions uh, for anger the well uh, try to cover that and then uh, today we will especially we are talking about heart disease and uh, including the research of my own and other researchers in terms of anger and heart disease will try to cover excellent wow i did not know there was so much about anger yeah. i know about <laughs> anger i know how I, i i know how to get angry but i didn't know there was yeah, so I'm much about i am actually so angry i didn't know enough <laughs> about anger <laughs> and uh, i just want to tell you the anger that we are discussing it today mm-hmm. is Uh, people um uh, you know ordinary people or so called um uh, normal people when they get angry or what the anger is i'm not going to talk about pathological anger or <laughs> um dsm category which is uh, diagnosed uh, uh, to have a mental is- disease and anger we are mm-hmm. not going to talk about that when they were going to talk about the anger in uh, in a day to day life wow Wow. 
நேர்களை ஃபோக்ஸ் ஜஸ்ட் ரீகேப் ஆஃப் who and what what we are going to be talking about who they are dr naras but uh, is an md fsp uh, board certified specialist in internal medicine allergy and immunology he has a very thriving practice here in the san francisco bay area in three different locations in addition he is also a very well renowned academician he is a professor he is a teacher and dean at saybrook uh, university uc berkeley chd counseling school um, and um, dug along and uh, dr kusum but she is a pa a phd she is a behavioral medicine you can tell what passion she has she is a pa and phd uh, behavioral medicine counselor at three different locations in the bay area again okay? and she is a professor and teacher at saybrook university uc berkeley and chd counseling school and together they have authored four different books uh, for the survival of mankind i should say uh, beautiful books that all of you can definitely you should get a copy of it and read and uh, you can all relate to the book so easily and you if you look at a book if you look at the topics or just just reading the topics aloud you want to just grab a copy and read it right away uh, there are four topics i can tell reversing heart disease and cancer reversing stress and burnout 10 road rules for weight loss and and money and mind body medicine that is all these are like the the need of the hour kind of books right sounds like a body bible kind of uh, <laughs> yeah uh, owner's <laughs> manual for your body owner's and your mind <laughs> yeah exactly that's right ap owner's body <laughs> yeah <laughs> fantastic again um, and also mm-hmm. i have um, my passion is writing poetry i just uh, published wow. a poetry book uh, in my mother tongue kannada Wow, very nice. nice, very nice. Okay. And um I know Dr. Bhat, uh, Dr. Naras Bhat, you have a passion about um teaching and uh, you yourself was a tennis player, right? Tell right, us about right. your tennis background. Right, right. I play tennis and I teach tennis nice. to my own children and as well as my grandchildren who have become varsity tennis players. Oh. Partly I, I I am responsible for that. Fantastic. So you are are you also responsible for John McEnroe's bad behavior on the court? <laughs> They, no, and that's an anger <laughs> management. Anger <laughs> management. Oh, that is, is that support. is that's yeah, <laughs> that is how he has not beaten right. me in tennis yet. Okay. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah, yes. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Very good, very good. So should we get started yeah, with Yeah, we'll uh, get started. Yeah. We cap of your uh, uh, heart management uh, questions so how do we want to get started doctor well we'll first start with the basic concept of what is heart disease sure you know the often people think heart disease is just a heart a disease of the arteries of the heart mm. actually it is a, it is called plaque disease a plaque is a deposit of a cholesterol and inflammatory material in your blood vessels that is in the heart in the brain in the kidney and and it can cause uh, problems you know the it can cause uh, heart attack brain attack called stroke and it can cause la- damage to your eyes and then it e- it can even cause uh, uh, dementia or alzheimer's disease because so it tell me the plaque. plaque can yeah. not only sit in your heart but it can sit in any other part of the body that's correct okay. wherever your pipes of blood vessels go mm-hmm. there you could have the plaque i see i see and that is why Uh, the heart disease is the dis- plaque disease okay. so you need to know how to identify that plaque you know but uh, uh, like we said before we go into that we need to know why is it so important for we desi indians yes. shall we talk about that absolutely okay we desi indians are approximately 20 to 25% of world population but we constitute 60% of heart disease Uh, afflicted people in the world that is almost three times more than any other population in the world additionally there is a 50 50 rule that means 50% of the heart attack in desi people occurs before the age of 50 that is shocking really in our own clinic we have as young as 28 and 29 year old desi people who have had heart attack oh my goodness oh my god okay and and not to forget women are not excluded okay so and then mortality you know we desi indians have three times more mortality more hospitalization due to heart disease okay now i'm sure you're curious to uh, find out why we they say indians have mm. more heart disease why are we more prone yes. why, why are we more prone and a lot of research is done and some of the most important research is uh, 
Caddy research by Dr. Enos from Chicago uh -huh. and most recently it's called Masala study from San Francisco. Uh -huh. Ah. Masala is an acronym okay. refers to you know the uh, in South Asian uh, heart uh -huh. it, it is the management of uh, uh, it's, a, it's a masala related to heart disease uh -huh. okay uh -huh. there are eight items you need to know uh -huh. why we they see people have more of a coronary artery disease compared to any other population in the world yes. and let me list it so that you listeners if you want to take note or don't take notes but at least learn uh -huh. Uh -huh. number one is diet Mm. We eat processed, high-carbohydrate diet, and most importantly, we use pro-inflammatory cooking oil. At a, that is, refined vegetable oil, safflower, sunflower, soybean, and corn oil. That's the most common oil that is used in the restaurants and as many of our Indian people's homes. And we, whereas, coconut oil, for example, is uh, inflammation neutral. Huh. And then additionally, you know, what Masala study has shown is that we are suffering from acculturation, meaning thereby we are in a different country, mm -hmm. you know, we are called Indian diaspora mm -hmm. outside of India, mm -hmm. you know, because we are, we feel discriminated in the society mm -hmm. and discriminated when we compete <coughs> with the local people. Mm -hmm. That creates an internal stress and mm -hmm. Masala study showed mm -hmm. that we relieve our stress by eating sweets. <laughs> Mithai. Oh. Mithai. Because you don't get that sweetness in your society, you try to get compensate it from the, it. compensate for it from your Mithai. Okay. So, wow. then the so, other... So, 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 so far it is yeah. oil, uh, in the, do not have that... Uh, Sanola oil, safola oil and all that just in the these are called omega-6 oil by the way omega-6 oil yeah go for a coconut oil which is neutral and, and also oil. you know the omega-3 oil that is like avocado oil or or olive oil, or olive oil. for sauteing olive oil for deep frying avocado oil is what we recommend mm. because it is anti-inflammatory whereas the all other vegetable oils are, are, are pro-inflammatory because they are omega-6 oils that is okay. the cl clarity of okay. the thought. And the second one is sweets. Sweets. Okay. And okay. Was, as you said, I think last time you said white sugar is definitely a no-no. Yes, it is a processed food, you know, processed carbohydrates we all eat because we no longer use the whole grain like our grandmother used to do. So we have processed atta now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is uh, regardless of, uh, you know, what kind of atta it is, it is processed and then reconstituted. Now, the other point I want to bring to your attention is a sedentary lifestyle, particularly mm. sitting. You know, we sit, especially in Silicon Valley here, you know, it's called sitting disease. When you sit more than six hours per day, then, you know, your heart disease risk increases to the extent that beyond six hours, every single minute you sit, you die two minutes sooner. Wow. Oh my God! Should I stand now? You yes. you may as well if you want to live <laughs> one more minute longer. <coughs> yes. So that That's is sitting disease. Valid point. And you know not only that you know the easiest way not to sit that long is focus on the three different activities that we do. You do one working on the computer, stand and work on the computer. Two when when you are watching television, stand and watch television. Stand and watch. Television. And three when you're texting or talking on the telephone, you know, you stand and do it. Uh -huh. These <laughs> three will reclaim your non-sitting time. You are going, if you stand. Wow. In our clinic, wow. we all have standing desk only. Ah. That's right. In our clinic, we always uh, stand and work. Ah. So let me finish this list so that the listeners can make their list. Diabetes, diabetes and obesity is a major, major factor for as a contribution for heart disease in Indians. We, uh, last year, we lectured in India in multiple cities. In several cities in India, diabetes incidence is more than 50%. 50%. 50%. Example, Pondicherry, Puducherry, okay? And say many parts of Kerala and uh, Tamil Nadu and some parts of Punjab, more than 50% are either pre-diabetic or a diabetic. And that is decreased insulin resistance. And these are the people, by the way, have highest risk for silent heart attack. Mm -hmm. Silent that's heart attack, the, it occurs the, without your knowledge. That, that's what has happened in Dr. K I mean, the Kaiser Permanente CEO's case. That's right. You know, Bernard Said Bernard Tyson. Yeah, he, he slept and didn't wake up. Didn't wake up. Yeah. Right. 
and in a part of the reason is sleep apnea as well apnea. and that is the thing now people always ask what is the genetic factor in desi indians that contributes right. to heart disease mm-hmm. and there are two you need to remember one is the quality of hdl which is called hdl 2b that was a research we did originally you know with the dr enos and dr superko here in bay area and that was we did that research in 1999 okay mm-hmm. we have less effective good cholesterol called hdl on the contrary we have the we call the cholesterol as good cholesterol hdl mm-hmm. bad cholesterol ldl ugly cholesterol triglyceride <laughs> and deadly cholesterol which is lp little a oh. we indians have 25 to 30% of us have that high deadly cholesterol called lp little a oh my god that is one of the factors oh my god okay and then what else you so need to know so when we go for a blood test or what you, you can get this tested yeah mm-hmm. you know you can get this tested you know but unfortunately the standard of care in our society today most doctors do not order lp little a and which we will discuss later on when we talk about blood tests and the other factors in this indians is very interesting the masala study showed that the way we store our fat is very unique we store our fat around our abdomen in the belly oh. right. and what is the paradox you may <laughs> if i may say that we brown skinned people have more of the white fat and the ah. caucasian ah. white skinned people have more of the brown fat so the brown mean? fat is more protective okay mm-hmm. and yeah, they and yeah, and yeah, and whereas the white fat is the non protect we are white on the inside and they are brown on the inside that's correct that's exactly right what does right. it mean what it means is if you have less of the brown fat then you have produce more inflammation in your body including mm-hmm. heart disease and heart attack oh. and the easiest way to build you can build your own brown, white brown fat in your body how you can train it like exercise where you go to lab where you go to gym and you know you work out to build your muscle similarly you can work out to build the favorable brown fat simply by decreasing the temperature of your home from the hot to cold like 68 No way. Oh, really? That is how simple That's it is. That's simple. Exposure to cold or take a cold shower at the end of the hot shower. Mm. That will build your brown fat. And the second way to bring, build your brown no fat, <laughs> that is how simple it is. Remember urbanization in India has more heart disease and then urbanization in the west to Indians who come to America, they are having their air conditioning and heating, heating in winter is removing your brown fat. decool it down when you sleep in your bed at at night you know cool down there are even gadgets now which is called you know the it is called cool pad you can plug in so your bed cools rather than warms to build your brown fat amazing so concept. this is happening through the skin you're saying the under the skin <coughs> under, the, under just the under the skin under the skin which is brown fat Okay, hmm. so masala study showed that you know our ectopic fat is one of the factors in producing heart disease. Okay, now what else you need to know is why another way to increase your brown brown fat is intermittent fasting, upavasa. We'll talk about it later. Yeah. And this is absolutely new to me. This is the, that is why you know we wanted to share this with your audience. Wow! You know? okay. And I, I just moments ago I stepped out to adjust the temperature, that not that. knowing about this actually. Okay, that that's cool right. trying to cool the cool let's, down. You have to cool down now cool so that down we can build now. some brown fat as we talk. Let's take a short uh, music break and we we right back. Uh, Neerkale, this is Tamar Chowdhury. This is R J Sudha. Uh, along with me is Doctor R Doctor Naras Pat and Doctor Kusum Pat. Of course, uh, R J Venki is here to supplement with all the mukkais and all that. Uh, we are talking about heart diseases with, uh, in, amongst Deshi Indians. Extremely important topics. Please, if you are listening to it, this is a very very important topic, a life saving topic. Ask your friends and family to tune in. We we'll listen to this song and we'll be right back. நேர்களே வெல்கம் பேக் இது தமிழ் சுவை ரேடியோ மிர்ச்சி தேர்ட்டீன் டென் உங்கள் ஆர் ஜே சுதா பேசுகிறேன் என்னோட கூட ஆர் ஜே வெங்கி இருக்கார டாக்டர் நாரஸ் பட் எம்டி எஃப்ஏசிபி ஹார்ட் ஸ்பெஷலிஸ்ட் எங்களோட கூட இருக்காரு அவங்களோட கூட வி ஹேவ் டாக்டர் குசும் பட் அவங்களும் ஆங்கர் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் டயட் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் எல்லா பத்தியும் பேச போறாங்க ஜஸ்ட் சம்மரைஸ் அபவுட் வாட் டாக்டர் நாரஸ் பட் ஹஸ் ஜஸ்ட் ஸ்போக்கன் அபவுட் ஹார்ட் டிசீஸ் எஸ்பெஷலி அமங்ஸ் தேசிய இந்தியன்ஸ் ஃபைவ் ஒரு ஃபைவ் 
uh, factors contribute towards uh, uh, Indians. Uh, India fight five factors uh, contribute towards heart diseases amongst Desi Indians. Uh, number one, um, the oil that we used, the ones that uh, especially the, the especially the safola oil, sanola oil, etc. The ones that are high, high in, o- in omega six omega six category. What is recommended is the ones in omega three that would be um, coconut oil uh, and coconut oil which is uh, omega neutral I would say, and then you can use uh, olive oil for sauteing and then you can also use uh, 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 avocado oil for deep frying. That is a point number one. Point number two is uh, just to be just for for people who have NRIs or something for like like us who have moved out of the Deshi, moved out of India and who are here and who feel uh, disconnected from the primary land. We try to stress. We try to de-stress ourselves by indulging in a lot of sweets. So instead of be that thing that white white sugar takes a toll on our body, try to reduce the sugar. That's what he says. Uh, and then the third point that is very important is uh, sitting. Don't sit for too long in one place. I mean, uh, stand up as you can, as much as you can. Walk around, especially taking a phone call or something. If you if you try to ask your employee to employer to have a standing position, standing standable uh, computer desks or whatever it is. If you want to take a phone call. Call to walk and take it if you want to. If you want to watch television, stand and watch it, etc. And then see uh, a lot of on that point. That's a good point. A lot of high tech companies here, right, mm-hmm. the Bay Area. Um, you can get a wireless f- headset or a Bluetooth yes, headset, yes. Most of them which do. will let you walk at least short distances around. Stand right. and watch. So that may be a, a way to um, make use of you know walking and uh, standing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As opposed to sitting while taking a call, right? And uh, I think there was one more very interesting thing that I learned just today was about the temperature, the way in which we uh, Asian Indians, uh, Desi Indians, store the fat. <laughs> I think uh, doctor would say it better. I think I don't want to mess it brown up. Brown fat versus white fat. Yes, brown fat versus white fat. So <coughs> brown fat is good, and uh, so to get to that, it's uh, better that the skin be a little cooler. Yes. Is, it, is that a way of Very looking at so. it? Very much so. Very much so. So a cold shower, following a hot shower, if, if you're, uh, you know, uh, used to taking hot showers at the end, you can take a cold shower just to t- uh, top it off. Top it off. And then don't keep, uh, while sleeping, and try to keep, keep the, the temperature do- to yeah. about 68 degrees and not higher than that. <clears throat> Great. Did, did I summarize? You summarize got it quite exactly okay. right. Cool. Okay. And, and then, then uh, is the uh, LP little. LP. Now that will cover again. But we will uh, uh, go jump into the thing. The uh, three things we are going to uh, again and again emphasize is mm-hmm. you know first is level one is a, 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 a risk uh, calculation or predicting the risk of heart disease, mm-hmm. and level two is identifying the presence of the plaque. And level three is looking at the inflammation on top of the plaque, okay? We're going to cover the three different categories of tests and how you can get tested. First and foremost, how to calculate your risk. And there are three tests that are available online for you free. Mm. And those three are, one is called heart age test. That is, this test is based on the current 2020 science. British Heart Foundation has made it available online. If you Google heart age test huh. and British Heart Foundation. Which is different from the chronological age of the person. Exactly right. Because how old is your heart related to your rest of your body? Wow. Mm. And that tells you, you, most people, their heart is older than them. And then you can do certain interventions to make your heart as mm-hmm. young as your body or even younger. Hmm. And that is why I urge you to take this test, which is called heart age test, which takes into consideration not only your uh, uh, genetic factor and also ethnic factor, but also the all cholesterol data, blood pressure, and say C-reactive protein and a heart scan test and so forth. Okay. So three calculators I said. One is that. Second is a good old Framingham risk calculator. And we don't use it much because it does not apply to Desi Indians. There, because there is no calculator for mm-hmm. Desi Indians. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the one we recommend the most now mm-hmm. is called U Prevent, the letter U. Mm-hmm. Okay? Like a U turn U, mm-hmm. the letter U Prevent Calculator. If you Google U Prevent Calculator, it is put out by Europeans based on the current 
science of uh, cardiology and there you can plug in your numbers regardless of how young or old you are and based on your Indian ethnicity you can not only calculate your risk for heart disease you can also estimate and project response to therapy and protection from heart disease. Nothing can be more effective than that and that is free and Absolutely. online. Okay. And uh, once again, it is the You Prevent Heart Disease Risk Calculator. Okay. I'm not sure if I understand that. You have a, they give you an identification number and then you register that? Yes. You know, the, you, know the, the, you can do it anonymously also. Mm -hmm. And then you put your age, you know, your ethnicity, your good cholesterol, your blood pressure, mm -hmm. and then your uh, activity level, your eating habit and then your heart scan or your inflammatory markers if you have them and if you put all and if you have chronic disease like rheumatoid arthritis okay. all these they will ask you systematically mm -hmm. and based on the current US and European cardiology science mm -hmm. which is a published evidence-based mm -hmm. research mm -hmm. it will calculate your risk of a coronary artery disease. Wow. Okay. Wow. That's how, <coughs> how direct and simple it is. So with that note, I think we should not forget that anger is a major <laughs> risk factor for heart disease. <laughs> and these calculators do not take into account anger as a risk for heart disease. Because anger is not that easily measurable. Exactly. Right. And that it's is not a problem. A tangible, it's not a tangible problem. Unlike so many indexes that we talked about for like a plaque index or a hyper, in, uh, like a blood pressure index or whatever it is, anger is not a measurable index. So well, like it is to, not to an extent, it is not. Okay. But, uh, uh, but it, can it, trans it can manifest as, it can translate into something uh, measurable. Yeah, um, Right. Uh, it, that is true. At the same time, uh -huh. there are anger scales where you can okay. measure. Okay. Um, uh, that is, in, uh, in fact, uh, one of them that I used in my research is called uh, STAXI. That is, that measures anger in, anger out, anger expression, and uh, there are many different uh, criteria. Wow. It will measure its paper and pencil uh, test. Nowadays, uh, there are some mm. uh, available online. Okay. But before uh, we uh -huh. go into how uh -huh. to measure, uh -huh. let's define what is mm -hmm. anger. Okay. Anger is a feeling that you are not included in my agenda. Mm. Mm. On the contrary, the opposite of anger, mm -hmm. which is altruism, is you are also included in my agenda. Okay. Give, you an, give you an example. Uh, say when you are going on a, uh, you know, in a car ride and you suddenly open your uh, car window, mm -hmm. your husband says, why did you do that? It's, uh, why, why do you have to open it? Because my agenda and her agenda are now clashing. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Because so she his wants agenda, agenda, your agenda. Yeah. Is, yeah. So instead, if you said, honey, do you have to open the window? So yeah, uh, that means you are also included in that one, that in anger is reduced. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. So that's, it's in a simple term oh. so just to say that you are excluded in my agenda. That is, that is anger. Mm. And there is a, uh, let me give you another um, uh, tangent of uh, anger, the iceberg model of anger. When you see an iceberg, what you see... You yeah, had used a different terminology along with anger. What was that? Um, a Altruism. Altruism. Uh, altruism. 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 Altruism is that you... Altruism is you feel good about uh, mm -hmm. uh, that situation or that person and you feel you're not angry. So that is because you're also included in my agenda. Okay. Uh, an example of altruism, like Mother Teresa is right. always give, given yeah. as an the example of altruistic person. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That is a selfless, selfless dedication right. for service of others. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, in the iceberg model of anger, when you think of an iceberg, the uh, tip of an iceberg is not the same as the, the whole the iceberg, iceberg, correct? Yeah. 
see the bottom of the iceberg in an anger model is it's a feeling of the emotion of feeling angry. The middle part is a cynical thought and the tip of the iceberg is your uh, emotional outburst or physical aggression that is anger. So ang when you say angry, it is not just the aggression, there are other things are uh, involved. So ang anger also can be anger in and anger out. Some people express it so explicitly and some people do not. Whether you have anger in or anger out, both have the effect because whether you keep mm. the original copy or give the carbon copy or you keep the carbon <coughs> copy or keep the original is still there. We'll just take a short uh, music break. Sure. Let me digest what you just said. We'll just take a short break. <laughs> 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 Nerkle, welcome back. This is Tamar Suvai, Radio Mirchi, 1310, uh, Mori, Padatala, Jyotika Avanga. She's trying to manage her anger. Uh, that, is a, that is a context of the song. But uh, Dr. Kusum, but she's talking about anger management. What is this? Uh, ma anger in, anger out. What happens? Yeah, so actually, this is a very apt song yes, because exactly. I have a question for Dr. Kusum, but on this. Mm -hmm. So, in, in this particular movie, Mm -hmm. uh, or in this particular scene, the the actress has, uh, she internalizes anger versus the no, hero. No, she internalizes because she, she can't she, talk. She, she can't talk, exactly. Okay. And then she still expresses it through her eyes. That's what the song is about. Mm -hmm. And then the actor, obviously, uh, you know, he, uh, he has his outbursts and he expresses his anger. Is there any, uh, you said they both have the same effect. Can you explain a little bit in that context? Very, very much so. Like I said, uh, whether you keep the carbon copy and give the original back, mm. or you keep the original or give the carbon copy, <laughs> it's exactly the same. You still have the anger. Correct. So on the other hand, there are research has done. People do not, who do not express, they are, uh, they are called type C personality in terms of type A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. People who have not expressed their um, anger or the emotions, they are, uh, they are prone to have uh, immunological disorder, including cancer. Oh, really? Yes. On the other hand, I can explain uh, in the same context uh, of type A and uh, type B personality. Type A, in fact, we worked with uh, Rosenman and um, uh, Friedman from San Francisco, and uh, he has done the research in 1976, and we joined him later on. We did the study that type A people who are, um, uh, they... They are always in a hurry, high achievers. Mm. They sit at the, you know, edge at the, the edge of the uh, the chair, <laughs> and then uh, very competitive. They are a type A personality. Uh, type B is uh, calm and collected. Where type C, they do not express uh, anything there. But like I said, they are prone to have uh, uh, cancer with the, on the type mm. A personality. And they, later on, he found uh, that they have more of uh, cynicism, and uh, that causes, um, you know, heart issues, including uh, hypertension mm. and uh, other diseases. So whether you want to have a cancer, you want to have heart disease, it's <laughs> up to you. Oh, I was going to ask you about A, B, and C. Right. Are there combinations of... Uh, Situational uh, things where in certain cases they are A, in certain cases they are B, and there is Depending hybrids. The yeah, there are hybrids of A and B, B and C, or A and C kind of things. Correct. Uh, in this, uh, this brings me a point where whether it is a state anger versus trait anger. Huh. When uh, when when, he, when we came, he said he was angry that uh, you know 49ers uh, <coughs> lost. Lost. Versus. It is still lingering in his mind that they have lost it. So if you continue to do that, that becomes a trait anger versus the state anger is when they just lost it few, few moments, moments ago, moment. like uh, last week, if you had forgotten, it is a state anger versus you still continue to have it and that's a trait anger. Yeah, for mm -hmm. me it's a state anger. So it okay. come to uh, the mm -hmm. point of A and B, sometimes they are, uh, 
you know, angry A, A, A or B, you can differentiate uh, uh, there. On the other hand, in the previous uh, wow. question that you have asked A, is uh, whether some people are expressing, some people are not, and right. uh, I, I want to tell you a joke. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> it's becoming, it's becoming, it's becoming a little serious issue. That's why. Sure. So um, uh, there's this uh, husband and wife uh, were fighting. Really, um, they were fighting, and then um, um, you know the wife was throwing the uh, the plate oh. and uh, at her husband, and um, the guy was uh, another guy was looking at them and said. Oh, you guys must be very angry. The husband said, "No, no, no, no. I'm really happy." And then we both are happy. You both are happy. You are throwing plate at each, each other. And then husband said, "If the plate misses me, I'm happy. happy. If the plate touches me, and my wife is happy, so we both are happy." <laughs> so <laughs> similarly, it is. It is not only how you get angry. How much you keep it and how much you mm. react. Your reactivity is the one causing you um, the damage rather than just the moment of anger. So I can go on and um, tell you what are the uh, effect of anger, especially in terms of uh, heart disease. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, to talk about the heart disease, the heart disease has... Um, few components. Uh, heart is a, you know, big uh, pump. So in terms of pumping power is called ejection fraction. Um, and then the pipes and the, when the arteries are blocked, causing a, a heart attack and uh, atrial fibrillation, which is the electrical um, uh, component of the heart. Mm -hmm. So all those three f uh, are affected by um, anger. Uh, there are researchers uh, done in uh, all these fields. One of the um, the latest in 19, uh, uh, 2016 uh, research called Interheart Study done on um, uh, 15,000 uh, uh, patients mm -hmm. of uh, 50 different countries. Mm. What they have found is um, the heart attack of two hours after anger outburst is twice, it's a rule of two, twice as much compared to otherwise. Not only that, if you do exercise or, you know, if your husband and wife are fighting and then uh, literally speaking, if she says, take a hike, you know, goes for exercise or, uh, you know, uh, does some um, vigorous activities, it's, it's twice, uh, 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 another like twofold uh, uh, of having a heart attack. In other words, you know, he will go for a run and I would never come back. Right. So this, you're this saying a, that You have a fight? You go for a hike and then <coughs> No, if you, have a, if, if you have you a, ha yeah, if you had a fight and um, and then uh, uh, say had a uh, heart attack, y y chance of having heart attack is uh, twi you know, twofold, right? On the other hand, if you had a fight and then if you go, you know, angrily you go for a hike or go for a run. You say you want to burn out your burn anger out by your going for a run. Right. Yeah. You are having a so chance that of combination is not good. Is what you saying? Not good. Uh, not Fact, good. Body activity and uh, the uh, you know where you, you are in a state of mind where you are still angry. Correct. Right. On the other hand, to counteract that, instead of uh, going for an exercise or getting angry and then hmm. running away, just learn to see what happens to your body, and then uh, just come down in the simple shavasana makes it, you know, um, uh, so much better and the less they have done the study has done uh, uh, le uh, less event compared to the other way. 
that is the inter heart study so shavasana is just lie down yeah lying ba- down basically is- you lie down and then you know close your eyes and focus your attention to different parts, parts of, of your body, body. and that is uh, a shavasana in the simplest way mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and then that calms you down not only that human being is the least aggressive in the lying down position as opposed to standing or walking position but it also makes you a very stationary target for flying vessels and uh, plates <laughs> yes right that is to you become a, I, I think yeah. that's the reason people you know the husbands usually go out right. you know, to avoid being hit yeah, right. 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 yeah. and then um, wow and okay uh, yeah let's go ahead. Mm-hmm. Okay and then um, coming back to uh, mm-hmm. other studies um, my own study what we have done um, in our clinic is um, we have we have taken the uh, patients who have uh, heart disease and then um, um, anger recall when when you give them the it's a double blind study when you uh, recall anger their ejection fraction which is the uh, uh, pumping power of uh, uh, heart is decreased on the other hand um, teaching them how not to get angry and then um, showing them uh, in a 21 day uh, program uh, reversing their uh, anger activity by paying attention to their body as well as we used a, a biofeedback technique and using heart math uh, institute um, uh, technique uh, called uh, heart rate variability by using that and uh, not only their anger reduced their ejection fraction increased so that shows the anger causes the uh, drop in the ejection fraction that is the study that we have done uh, you know i have done that uh, study in in the in the clinic so that is in the in terms of uh, the heart and the heart pump there is a um, another study done in terms of atrial fibrillation and um, uh, anger especially women uh, uh, postmenopausal women uh, let's explain what atrial fibrillation yes. the atrial fibrillation is the upper chamber of your heart or uh, the you atrium, know, atrium atrium and then the lower chamber is the, the ventricle they are not in sync So and the upper one I raise us too fast. Or, okay. No, no the in, in terms <coughs> of uh, pumping the the blood out as well right. as in the electrical uh, il, um, uh, signals. So they are not in sync. So that is how your heart start you know beating fast and then mm. uh, um, uh, that way irregular rather not okay. fast irregular. So um that is reversed by taking uh, beta blockers that that calms them down and that that shows that you know um doing the anger management and then uh, um giving uh, you know calming down uh, you know reduces the atrial fibrillation uh, especially that that is more in um, menopausal uh, post menopausal women yeah it's very important to know because you see the red red day yesterday and today mm. and that is a women's heart attack especially post menopausal that some of them could be due to anger attacks and because, and then because oh. that could give you a fib atrial fibrillation and this is something to learn from Yeah okay. there is also something about uh, just like how you talked about shavasana there is also some breathing techniques that they teach uh, about uh, anger right correct mm-hmm. they say correct when yeah, you think they, you're definitely when it, when it comes to uh, um i mean this is the uh, good time to um, talk to you about how to reverse or how to control yes uh, before that uh, let me let me tell you um uh, each we all have a uh, different reactivity when it comes to reacting to uh, anger for example uh, if you pay attention to your body each person react differently and uh, some may have a rapid heartbeat some may breathe <laughs> like that some may have muscle tension 
and uh, some may start uh, uh, sweating in your palm. So each, uh, phys each person's physiological signal is uh, different. Depending on your physiological signal, you have to learn how to reduce that one. Yeah. Uh, that can be a simple way is to paying attention to your belly button. Mm. Say uh, just for a few seconds and the, close your eyes or even otherwise pay attention to your belly button. What happens is when you are really angry, if you think of it, uh, you know, regardless of what you are uh, physiological signal is most people breathe uh, what we call thoracic breathing versus abdominal breathing. When you breathe mm -hmm. in, the normally your belly button should raise up and then breathe out, it has to come down. When you're anger and you're angry, it is, re it is reversed. Mm -hmm. So if you learn to pay attention to your belly, belly button and breathe in, bring your belly button up, breathe out, belly button down. That comes down within <clears throat> a few seconds. And um, so that is one way of learning. Then to, uh, to answer your question, uh, learn to breathe properly, and uh, that is one way. We'll take a short break. Okay. Sure. I know you had a song request. I'm going to play that song for you. <laughs> <laughs> Already? Nearly, this is Tamar Suvai Radio Mirchi 1310 RJ Sudha Pesrein and Nakuda RJ Vinkir Karam. In the studios, we have uh, Dr. Naras, but uh, MD, FACP, uh, cardiologist, uh, heart specialist, especially focusing on the um, heart diseases amongst uh, Deshi Indians. We also have, along with him, uh, Dr. Kusum, but she's talking all about anger management, uh, the physiological aspects of it, a lot of it, how it affects the heart, how it affects uh, so many other as aspects of the body and mind etc very interesting terminologies about in uh, anger in anger out there's so many terms that i have never never come across type a personalities type b plus type c etc uh, going to go back to uh, the conversations now folks if you have some questions for uh, dr naras but or dr kusum but do call us the number on the studio is 4089341310 uh, let's go back to Dr. Kusum, but sorry, it's continuing. It's okay. Um, so uh, another aspect of uh, anger is uh, what we ca uh, uh, what we talk about is uh, in terms of the solutions of anger is we call we call it uh, amygdala uh, hijacking. Uh, for a simple uh, layman's terms, and if you divide. Uh, the brain into three different parts. Lower brain, which is a reptile brain, uh, it's an old brain, or the midbrain, the mammalian brain, or the upper brain, uh, the human brain. If you divide that into three parts, when somebody is angry, then we call it uh, um, bullet and uh, uh, trigger uh, principle. So when somebody is angry, so suddenly, you know, uh, whether it's a uh, road rage or uh, any kinds of uh, sudden rage, your reptilian brain uh, acts and cannot think. It's an irrational brain. Reptilian mm. brain is like a like a, a snake. snake. Uh, you know, uh, ah. the, uh, it, it it's an old brain. Uh, they also call it old brain. The, it it acts. It acts within six seconds. So if you have a gun in your hand, if you do not think if you are irrational, then you pull the trigger, right? So you have to, uh, 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 and for that to become a rational, it takes 18 minutes. So uh, from wow. six seconds to 18 minutes, and then um, your thalamus, which is a, say, you call it a, a air traffic controller. So stop the high, uh, a hijack and then if you think and then calm down your anger should reduce w within you know 16 minutes. to 18 minutes and then you will start 
thinking rationally. Instead, and uh, if you if you pull a trigger, it's gone. That is how you hear in many places. You know, this guy killed that guy killed uh, this right. with, uh, within mm-hmm. few mm-hmm. seconds because sudden rage, sudden mm-hmm. rage is that yeah. your reptile Impulsive. brain and not not even your mammalian brain, uh, you or your human brain, which is a rational brain. Uh, you know, your neocortex and cortex. For if you give a chance for that one, you will start thinking rationally. Instead, if you if you're still in a in a lower uh, reptilian uh, brain thing, it only takes a six seconds for it to. Um, six seconds, you know, like two breaths max. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. you know most people breathe like a twelve times in a, a minute. Yeah. So that is uh, six seconds could be depending on how fast you breathe, one to two breaths. Right. For that reason, how do you uh, <coughs> stop that uh, hijack is, again, coming back to your body. When, in, when, in, it doesn't matter who it is. Uh, when you're very angry, they, you, you, if you see them, their body, depending on their physiological signal, then they are either they're sweating, they're just uh, tremoring, or they're just uh, breathing from, you know, their uh, you know, th- uh, thorax instead of their stomach. If you just take a few seconds and pay attention to your belly button, and then you will calm down. Then, mm-hmm. uh, so, um, uh, in no matter when, what the cause of the anger is, and uh, pay attention not to your emotion, pay attention to your body. Like you asked a question earlier, uh, you know, um, whether it is uh, mind or the body, depending on either mu- muscle to mind or mind to muscle, you cannot control your mu- uh, mind that easily, but you can control your body easily. So for that reason, whether the because the transition, from, the transition time is so narrow, right? Right. It cannot right. hardly. It is can, hard to control your mind. It takes longer time. Like I said, mm. it, it, it takes. Uh, 16 to 18 uh, minutes, whereas to control your body, it takes few seconds. The, so the, by breathing, whether, the yeah, breathing and focusing yeah. on the whether it's your anger is whether you your reactivity is from muscle to mind or mind to muscle, it is hard to control your mind. Instead, it's easy to control your body. For that reason, you pay attention to your body. What happens, especially pay attention to your belly button, and then you you can think rationally and uh, uh, start at least taking a deep breath and pay attention and th- that will calm your uh, mind as well mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so the, the belly button uh, thing look up uh, don't try it at work though we don't want no, everybody no, 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 to pull I'm up not, their shirts. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not, not saying. Look at no, 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 not you feel not it not not no, 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 no. Just, just pay attention, attention to, to it. You had a physical yeah. look. Ah, I did okay, not so say you look, look at, at your it. belly button. <laughs> <laughs> that to somebody else, somebody else's belly button. <laughs> <laughs> so it is paying attention to your belly button. <laughs> and uh, and if it is, it's okay if you have like pins and whistles around your belly button. It's still okay, right? <laughs> it yeah. is just paying attention, closing your eyes and. Pay it's called inter- to interoception. interoception. Internal perception of Internal your belly perception. button. Oh. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then the other one uh, related to, all, <laughs> again, physiological questions. Yeah. So you mentioned the uh, three parts of the brain. Did yeah. you mention it as something to, as an example? We don't really have a reptilian brain sitting at the Actually, bottom. Actually, they, uh, they are classified as that because uh. when, before we became human beings, it was uh, evologically that that is how it started. Oh, really? Our brain evolved into a human brain level. That is why it is it is called that way. Okay, so we do have the reptilian uh, portion to it. We do have it. Unfortunately. So over time, we evolution will take care of that correct. and get rid of it. Co- is e- the hope. Yeah. Well, hopefully. But Within we 18 have, minutes. <laughs> no, we have, we have evolved into humans for that reason. For that reason. Okay, got it. 
So now uh, shall I we think move we have on to the blood test some or the, uh, what we have uh, some more questions uh, no she's done yeah she has done about yeah. your phd thesis uh, work uh, on like uh, like i said in my phd thesis uh, we did the study on uh, taking patients who have uh, heart disease and then the low ejection fraction or the pumping power of the heart and then uh, after doing the um, uh, by a feedback study we used a um, thing called um, um, heart rate variability heart rate variability is the uh, beat to beat distance of your uh, heartbeat and then by uh, uh, doing the treatment with the anger uh, treatment there um, Uh, I don't I have I don't have the device I would have shown you what happens but their ejection fraction mm-hmm. uh, pumpy or uh, the pumping power of the heart uh, mm-hmm. uh, increased mm-hmm. so uh, that is the mm-hmm. um, that is statistically significant um, uh, improvement in their um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, in terms of uh, qualitatively they it improved mm-hmm. not only that then uh, we studied them later on mm-hmm. quant in uh, a qualitatively the quantitatively it increased the qualitatively their lifestyle has changed uh, for mm-hmm. example these patients um, i can give you some examples of the patients and he just came he just uh, he had a heart attack and uh, because he was so angry he couldn't control it. he he threw away um some 100,000 dollar worth of computers and huh. broke it into pieces and then uh, you know he got angry him- at himself uh, and then took it on his uh, all these computers and things and then uh, within 2 hours like i said within 2 hours he had a heart attack and then he came back and then when we did the treatment and and then uh, months and months and months later him and his wife came and uh, told us and he's a changed changed man. Changed man so the similarly the m- many of the patients who that we have treated like that and they came back and said their not only their heart uh, mm-hmm. uh, health is uh, lost improved, the feed, volume improved, low volume low uh, improved or and then um, their quality of life has improved Welcome back. This is uh, R.J. Sudha with Tamar Suvai on Radio Marchi 1310. Uh, we're going to go back to Dr. Naras, but we're going to talk about the uh, top five blood cholesterol tests for risk calculation and know your numbers. Uh, welcome back, Dr. Naras. But would you like to continue on uh, uh, heart yes. diseases or yes. uh, vision disease? Well, well, what I want your listeners to know is that the most commonly done blood test, that is a good cholesterol or HDL and bad cholesterol or LDL and ugly cholesterol, cholesterol or triglyceride and uh, is not com- complete you need to have additional two tests at least one the deadly cholesterol or lp little a which is most commonly present in at least 30% of desi indians then on all of us regardless the one single test if i have to monitor in my patient that one is a predictive of a risk is called particle number ldl particle number that is why when we say no your number what i specifically mean is ldl particle number and this is not commonly tested by your doctors because the science and the practice of medicine there is a g- great gap there and because of the insurance industry and so forth mm. so those who really need the <coughs> 2020 value of science ask your doctor i want to know my ldl particle number and i want to know my lp little a these are not expensive tests they are done by local labs and so ask for it so those are the L P little A. Is, is that the same as lipids test or is no? Lipid test covers all of the cholesterol tests. Oh, but I see. excluding L P doesn't stand for L P means lipoprotein A. Lipoprotein A. Okay. And in okay. in a scientific lingo, it is always called as L P little A. Okay. Okay. The A is written in a, in a small A. Suffix kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so what you need to know is that. cholesterol test is only half of the game because 50% of people who have heart 
attack and get admitted to the hospital have normal cholesterol mm. i repeat 50% people who have cardiac event and get admitted to the hospital have normal cholesterol so cholesterol is not the fortune teller in all cases at mm. least not in 50% of cases and then the remaining can be captured by inflammation test c reactive protein is the most important inflammation test and then this is why those of you who are listening you may want to quote these studies to your doctors and that one is on uh, uh, the inflammation test called a canto study c a n t o s study and then also jupiter study you know the those are the studies you say based on these two studies doctor i want to get my inflammation tested get my c reactive protein crp tested okay so when you say inflammation where is this inflammation i know there can be inflammation on your fingers your knees your toes and all that can there be inflammation in the blood vessels yes indeed inflammation is in your blood vessel and in the plaque and the plaque is the deposit of the cholesterol and when that gets inflamed it is like heating the hot lava inside the volcano oh. so that will erupt any time hmm. so the cardiac event like a heart attack occurs when the hot lava erupts wow now the question you will immediately ask is what are the specific blood tests that will predict such hot lava erupting and there are these are the key tests those of you who are listening write this down number 1 crp c reactive protein number 2 plaque p l a c test number 3 m p o myelor peroxidase test and number 4 micro albumin in your urine that reflects inflammation in your kidney so it is not enough if you get tested for cholesterol you have to be tested for inflammation not just by c reactive protein but also the mpo plac and then the microalbumin that i mentioned when you do this you can predict a forthcoming heart attack or brain attack called stroke within the next 6 months wow that is how That's the current accurate. 2020 science is <clears throat> of course is not as accurate as you as, as your fortune teller you yeah know. that's true and so <laughs> So there's that is of, the I'm sure there's a lot of uh, AI technology also involved in this because there is so much of data that is going in right uh, and, uh, yes. and all this uh, you said uh, the indexing that uh, uh, the American government and uh, U- UK government is also u- using I think sure there's a lot of calculation that goes a lot of calculations you're right and in you know, much of the report itself gives you normal range and how much you are out of the range it is a no brainer to look at it and say are you in the red zone yellow zone or green zone okay yes. because the lab has all this algorithm as you know you know the labs have responsibility to make it accurate so they do not give you mm-hmm. you know a wrong data mm-hmm. so you are very right and these algorithms are taken into account mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so now we have covered now the basic cholesterol test and we have covered the inflammation test so when yeah. i go to you talked about mpo cl ac yeah. crp mrp when i go to my doctor and then you also talked about a little uh, a, lp little lp a. little a yeah. uh, i can tell my physician to take all these tests right when i uh, you can request it because mm-hmm. often you know based on your insurance coverage it may or may not be covered mm-hmm. the question you would ask is where do i get these tests done mm-hmm. these tests can be done locally through quest diagnostic laboratory which by the way has recently purchased the cleveland heart lab so much of the study we do now is done through quest lab but the test is done at the cleveland heart lab in cleveland ohio mm. okay this is the most advanced panel mm. now some of these tests may not be covered by your insurance but you should invest in your arteries <coughs> you should of invest course. in your health and pay from your pocket because uh, you know this is why this is called money style 
many people say i do not want the test to be if my insurance does not cover yeah how right? much would this cost just to get it it's a very good question okay i mean the some of these tests now for example the complete panel can be done in with less than 300 dollars okay what i mean is the insurance uncovered component can yeah. be as less than 300 dollars okay insurance covered component will be fully covered mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so for that money what you find is again the predictability <coughs> of your cardiac event like a heart hits a heart, heart attack or stroke within a reasonable time in your future okay that is what i call the science of 2020 as it is focused on coronary artery disease or heart attack Okay. So how often would I have to take mm, these tests? Good question. That's I a mean, very good question. Yeah. How often you you get a baseline done? Okay. Once a baseline <clears throat> is done, you should be put on intervention of a diet, hmm. exercise and physical activity and then stress management and then medications if you need it. Okay. And then what we do is every 3 months we keep on testing you. until your values are stabilized and normal mm. once that happens then you can have it to get, get yourself tested every 6 months and some mm. of the tests you take it once in your lifetime for example lp little a you don't have to take it uh, every time it is once mm. in your lifetime mm-hmm. right because lp uh, little a is it doesn't a, change over it time. is genetics you know It's you have genetics. already chosen your parents one time on I the final yeah yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. So anything genetic, yeah, mm-hmm. you take it once. Once. And uh, then but the others, you know, if if you're if you want when you take the baseline and let's say you're not considered at risk. Right. Then how often should I take that test? We, you mean if you have the risk or don't have the risk? If I don't, don't have the risk. If you don't have the risk, then if you gain weight and or the common things that happens to everybody is aging, okay? Aging. And then even if you gain weight or not, Okay. So you will need it once a year. Once One, a year. That is why all physicals are done once a year. I, I see. Okay. okay. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <coughs> so, doctor, uh, maybe we can talk about the top five uh, heart disease action plans. Yes. Now, before we go into the action plan, I want to cover the how do you find out if you have the plaque or not? Because the, oh. and the plaque presence is the disease presence. So ha- there are five. very important test to find out if you have plaque or not the most commonly done the test is a stress test stress test can be mm. false positive or false negative in a 30% of cases mm. each why because the stress test measures blockage that is 50% or more whereas okay. the heart attack occurs in a plaques that are less than 50% it doesn't go by the percentage it doesn't go by the percentage because okay. even a baby baby small plaque can rupture and give you a heart attack okay so that is why stress blood. test is a function test meaning how much blood is supplying <laughs> to your heart if the stress test is positive what do they do they take you to the cath lab and then do an angiogram angiogram and they put a stent once again new research this is a 2017 research published in new england journal it is called courage it, study the heart is not able to push properly push hard enough mm. pipe is pipe not pipe. wide pipe. enough pipe, pipe is yeah. not Pump wide enough the, the blood vessels which supply the blood to the heart are blocked Block. those are called coronary and that can be coronary that can be artery. tested only yeah. through a stress test right and if the stress test is negative my question to you your audience is here If your doctor says your stress test is negative, go home and and enjoy your life. Can you have a heart attack the next morning? Mm. Answer is definitely possible. Oh. Why? Tim Russert, you might have heard of a NBC news reader. Mm-hmm. His doctor, Dr. Newman, did exactly that. He said your stress test is normal. Go and enjoy your life. And within a few days, he has a heart attack. while he was reading news uh, on the television because stress test does not rule out your vulnerability of having a heart attack it only gives you if the pipe is supplying enough blood to the heart or not 
you see yeah, enough blood under normal times or under a stress uh, that's a good time. question like you know people normally go to the doctor they're telling that when i exercise i have chest pain so exactly stress test is you exercise on the treadmill then you need have a more need of blood mm. and the narrow pipe is not allowing such a blood flow right. then you have chest pain or chest pain equivalent in the ekg called st segment depression or elevation mm -hmm. okay but simply means it's a marker of the heart crying and telling i'm not getting enough blood supply okay but still it does not tell you whether you're going to have a heart attack tomorrow or not mm -hmm. for that you need inflammation markers if i have to tell your audience is what <coughs> is a, a definitive test to tell somebody that you have heart disease or not that test happens to be calcium score heart scan test okay heart scan to quantify or calculate your calcium score it tells you as definite as you know for a pregnancy test you know if your pregnancy test is positive you definitely are pregnant right. okay if it is not visible within 9 months it will come out <laughs> right right similarly if you have calcium score in your coronary arteries you definitely have coronary artery disease this is where you need to take care of yourself so we use it for that reason in our bay area community this particular heart scan test is by the way is not covered by insurance in state of california it is only covered in the state of texas in the entire united states hmm. so it costs only $150 and your doctor has to just write one little note get a heart scan and you can go and get it done in this area stanford radiology does it in walnut creek we have bass radiology and this is $150 only that's not much at all but it's not Very covered cheaper by than moving to texas for good Uh, yes, less than the ticket to fly to uh, Texas. Right. <laughs> you're right. You're absolutely right. <laughs> and one other comment I want to make is a, a, a non-invasive test called carotid duplect ultra ultrasound. It's an ultrasound examination of the blood vessels in your neck that tells you whether you have plaque build up in your arteries or not. okay this test is covered by insurance but it is non invasive it tells you that you have artery disease in india we say when you are cooking rice you don't have to pick out every grain of rice and it is cooked mm. if one grain is cooked all the rest of the yes, yes. rice is cooked you just need to have a handful to see if it is good right. or not yeah. similarly you know if you have artery disease in your neck you have it in your heart mm -hmm. you have it in your kidney you have it in your brain everywhere that is why these are the te plaque tests that we recommend you know for your audience and then uh, they are not expensive <coughs> except you need to know in in other words so, stress test is not the final answer so the plaque um, the plaque test can be done when you say the plaque test can be done let me check it let me reframe this question when you when you say the plaque test is it done for, with a focus on the plaque around the heart tissues or heart muscles or the heart, arteries or the heart the blood vessels leading to the heart or generally any any blood vessel the the answer is you know plaque presence of plaque test can be done in any part of the body okay coronary artery presence of plaque easiest way to diagnose is by heart scan because it tells you there is a calcified plaque for calcified plaque there is a uncalcified soft plaque as well usually we say 80 20 rule but you can also uh, prove the presence of uh, plaque in your artery in the neck or there is another test called ankle brachial reflex meaning thereby uh, ratio ankle brachial ratio meaning thereby your blood pressure in your leg should be higher than the blood pressure in your arm <laughs> if it is not <laughs> that means you have peripheral vascular disease in your legs 
and it is a simple blood pressure measurement test. That tells you that you have peripheral vascular disease, which is again the plaque disease, then you are most likely to have such a disease in your heart and in your brain everywhere. Okay? So that's the whole story of plaque mm -hmm, test. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, the top five uh, heart disease action plan. Action plan. plan. Okay. Now, the top five action plan for your heart disease mm -hmm. are, I, let me first list the five mm -hmm. and then we will elaborate as the time permits. Number one is a diet. Mm -hmm. Okay? Number two, exercise, more importantly, a thing called non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Mm. I will explain. Neat. It's called NEAT. Mm. NEAT is not going to the gym and running on the <coughs> treadmill or riding the bicycle in the gym. It is the moving your body, including fidgeting, okay? And then any kind of movement of your body is called non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Okay. This research is done by Mayo Clinic by Dr. James Levine. So what you're telling me is what we do in the gym is not the real exercise. No, no, no. You're not saying you, you don't have to do only the exercise of going to the gym. Uh, you no, can full, do full the, body movement should also you, be there. You should do uh, overall rest of the day instead of just going 5 minutes, 10 minutes to the gym. What you do throughout the day makes a difference. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Because, you know, having half an hour, an hour of gym work is not going to protect you. <coughs> and that is why we have lots of gadgets now that measures your activity throughout the day. The okay. handheld thing. Yeah, yeah and the non-sitting I have mentioned. So that's the item number three. Mm -hmm. And then uh, sleep is very important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sleep is the slayer. Sleep is the saver. And mm -hmm. most important thing for Indian Desi people is the sleep apnea, snoring. Okay. When you snore, it is not the sound of snore, it is the lack of oxygen due to blockage of your airways that is damaging your heart. Okay. If, and snoring, especially when the oxygen, normally the oxygen level should be 95 to 100. When you snore, with the, each episode of snore, you have what is called apnea, then your blood, your oxygenation drops from 95 to 100 to as low as the 60 to 70. Wow. 60 to 70. That contributes to gaining the weight as well as the atrial fibrillation that we talked about. Exactly. And the, the, that is one of the causes of uh, atrial fibrillation as well as the weight gain due to leptin and, leptin and ghrelin imbalance mm. due to not enough of oxygen going into your brain due to sleep apnea. Mm. A and also diabetes. Yeah. It increases your you know, insulin uh, resistance. And so sleep we mentioned mm -hmm. and the fifth item is stress and anger management mm -hmm. you know she has already covered. So these are the principles mm -hmm. and the, I want to revisit the diet part for your benefit. That is the processed food eating and eating more frequently is the most common wrong way of eating we do as Desi Indians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then cooking oil I mentioned, stay away from pro-inflammatory omega-6 oil mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and most commonly used corn oil, safflower, sunflower uh, and then uh, the uh, sa uh, corn oil, safflower, soybean oil. Mm -hmm. These are the four. And instead, use olive oil or <coughs> avocado oil and coconut uh, oil is okay. Are you familiar? It, South Indians, we use um, uh, nalenne, which is nalenne. what we call nalenne. Which nalenne. Nalenne. What do you think about it that? It is fine for sautéing and flavoring, but it cannot deep fry. Deep fry we never use. Because it. its smoking yeah. point is very low. Low, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is nalenne or elenne. Uh, yeah, til, til, til ka tel. Huh? Yes, til yeah. ka tel. Til ka tel. So, the, now, so what are we all in sync with the concept of uh, all, I mean, coconut oil? Ups and downs, sometimes they say it's good, sometimes they say it's bad. No, it's Very good. much so. The oil industry, especially the corn in, uh, oil industry is the one mm -hmm. uh, the, um, 
Ansel Keys uh, research at that time they said the coconut oil is bad because they wanted to promote uh, corn oil mm. and uh, uh, wow. so uh, th- that concept has changed the, not that a coconut oil is the omega 3 uh, it's a coconut oil is uh, neutral on the other hand coconut oil has other components like uh, lauric acid uh, you know if you recall when we were all little in uh, in india if so, if you fall down uh, you put a little bit of coconut oil because it has the healing power so uh, because of the lauric acid, lauric acid. Mm-hmm. Lauric so which is the, the anti inflammatory the anti inflammatory okay. yeah. so just like <coughs> omega 3 it is an anti inflammatory along with it's a neutrally uh, neither omega it has two components in uh, coconut oil mm-hmm. uh, so it is neutral mm-hmm. so for mm-hmm. that reason coconut oil is not bad mm-hmm. let, let me comment on that because i know lot of these people have question on coconut oil mm-hmm. coconut oil has a c8 c10 and c12 carbon atoms c8 is called caprylic acid mm-hmm. and c a 10 is called capric, capric acid, acid and C12 is called lauric acid. acid. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. C C8 and 10 is also used called as MCT oil and which is used in uh, fasting as well as ketogenic diet. Okay. Yeah. Which is, is which is automatically generated by the body you're saying? No, no, no. It is the fractionated you can buy fractionated coconut oil okay and you know from uh, uh, safeway or from uh, uh, sprouts and whole foods and all this is they have taken out the c8 and 10 okay. and separated the c12 okay. that means it's called it, mct oil it is called medium chain triglyceride or mct oil that is quickly available by your li- body and the liver particularly to produce a nutritional ketosis that allows you to mm. enter a state of low insulin requirement thereby fasting fasting promoting. mimicking fasting mimicking but that is what is, is called but it is not for cooking but it is it is used as a supplement 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 so you take the supplement and then you go fasting you can you can you can that's a go- good way so do we have time to give a 5 okay. minute i want uh, to talk about the intermittent fasting let's do that yes. exactly let me clarify the concept of intermittent fasting or upavasa okay you need to know the following the fasting can be you know less than one day once a day once every other day or for 3 to 5 days and now why so because when you increase your fasting for a prolonged period of time like 3 4 or 5 days then autophagy or it is the cleaning up of the broken tissue yes. broken that one is enhanced and a new and stem cell based regeneration and rejuvenation happens but the problem is because of the hunger we cannot do water only fasting for 3 to 5 days that is why the new science by walter longo from longevity institute in uh, uh, southern california uh, they have spent 36 million dollars to prove the point that if you feed the body with very low carbohydrate 20 g or less and mostly healthy fat and then these 5 days if you feed that way approximately 800 to 1000 calories you can experience the benefit of fasting by the process of fasting mimicking mm. so those of you who are listening if you can log in and look at fasting mimicking diet and search it and there a lot of information on that uh, it is called prolonpro.com p r p r o l o n p r o.com you can learn all about fasting mimicking the same plus mimicking is the same as intermittent fasting it is one of the methods of ah, intermittent okay. fasting the simplest intermittent fasting we all can do which are what i do is uh, it is called 168 
16 hours of fasting and eating in your 8 hour window. Give you my own example. We eat our dinner late like most Desi people at 8 p.m. most of the time. Okay. Okay. Whereas uh, the regular Americans? Caucasian Americans, they eat six at 4, 5 or 6 mm. p.m. Okay. Except they eat a snack before they go to bed. But we eat at 8 p.m. And then I, and when we eat our dinner at 8 p.m., the next morning, 8 a.m., that is the 12 hours of fasting already, then instead of break, instead of eating a regular breakfast, I eat half of an avocado, the other half, my better half eats. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Okay. And then we have MCT oil in a one or two tablespoon poured on top of the avocado as if it is a salad dressing. Then I drink coffee without cream or, or sugar. No cream, no sugar coffee. And that is my breakfast. And by doing so, I am doing fasting, mimicking such a way <laughs> that until noon, I am not hungry mm -hmm. and I eat my lean and green lunch at 12 or 1 o'clock and my body has gone through 16 hours of fasting and I feed it during the 8 hour between 12 and 8 p.m. again. And this is the simplest fasting mimicking anybody can do. Right? Fantastic. It's actually and something similar to what we do. It's MCT and oil. MCT yeah, oil. <coughs> MCT refers to medium chain triglyceride. And you get it anywhere. You get you it, get in, it you in, you know, locally at Sprouts is where I buy because, you know, it is a cost of approximately $15 for a month supply, you know, the or actually it is a little more than a month. And then uh, it works. I give you my own uh, numbers. My hemoglobin A1C, it is the index of diabetes, was 6.2. And after a fasting mimicking diet that I explained, after three months, it has dropped to 5.5 .5 from 6.2. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was pre-diabetic. Now I'm not pre-diabetic. Diabetes is when your A1C is more than 6.4. Pre-diabetes is between 5.6 and 6.4. Okay. Can I ask you a question? How uh, this kind of uh, intermediate fasting or mimicking fasting? Uh, I know it's okay for adults to do it when we are we are aging 40s, 50s, maybe later on. How about teenagers? Is definitely. It? Definitely they can do. They can do it too? Yeah. And a, a very good question. Newborn human baby is uh, already doing intermittent fasting and ketogenic diet from day one. Ah. Mm. Yeah. And then we grow up, we are overfed with abundance and <laughs> more frequent feeding and then no more fasting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I okay. have been doing the fasting ever since I was 10 years old. Really? Interesting. Any, any important topic or should I play a song? We uh, have some what's time. our timeline? We have and eight, any eight questions from audience? Uh, people are having very good feedback so far. Excellent feedback they have been giving us on my WhatsApp as well as uh, so they all say it's excellent. Okay, now the well, only the uh, concluding uh, comment I want to uh, add is this: uh -huh. that is the uh, medications for heart disease, yes, yes. statins. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, now he here is the thing: now statins are used not only to reduce your cholesterol level and the more important reason you use statin is to reduce the inflammation okay this oh. is a new learning 2020 learning based on the new science by dr paul ridker from harvard and it's called canto study c a n t o s study for that reason you know any small amount of statin is better than no statin number 1 number 2 when you choose a statin, you choose the best statin. It's called Rosua statin or Crestor, which used to be very expensive. Now it is very, very cheap. And as, li as, as less as $10 a month is the cost if you don't have insurance. Why so? Because Rosua statin being hydrophilic as opposed to lipophilic does not cross the blood-brain barrier. That's why memory problem and, and then uh, the confusion problem, these are the side effects of the statin mm -hmm. is the least with the Rosova statin 
and then that is why you know you, you need to choose the right kind of statin okay tell me if uh, medication oh. statin is that a generic name of a medication uh, uh, rosvastatin is a generic name and the uh, trade no, name no, was she's crestor she's talking about statin is a, yes statin is a, a class of drug class of statin drug. is a class of drug class of drug mm, yeah. and is it like an over the counter medication no. prescription no no, no. not in this country not no in this no, country. no no yeah, you know, in india you can buy anything over the counter yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. and then uh, one other thing i want to add in terms of uh, intermittent fasting is it is it is very useful p- for people who have uh, dementia or uh, alzheimers disease the intermittent fasting has shown to have uh, improvement in even in the alzheimers uh, uh, disease so for that reason it is not only to lose weight or maintain the weight and uh, it is it improves your uh, memory excellent point and particularly wow. particularly for the people who have dementia and alzheimers disease if they do the intermittent fasting with the mct oil as a supplement it they get double whammy effect double benefit because they are increasing their nutritional ketosis the brain loves ketones not mm. carbohydrate mm. okay that's why you're feeding the brain Is oh it? yeah because uh, uh, alzheimer is all about the brain about the brain so that comes to the topic of what we are going to talk next time in your It radio is? show <laughs> <laughs> alzheimer <laughs> very nice very nice yeah. what a what a day what so much of uh, knowledge packed show today it has been wonderful thank you very much dr naras but thank Dr. you Kusum, yeah. but, thank um, you really with that happy. i will just play the song that uh, dr naras but uh, requested me beautiful beautiful song oh, thank kabhi you. kabhi uh, mere dil mein wow. fantastic <laughs> song amita oh, bachan that is best uh, let's play the song khayal aata hai kabhi kabhi mere dil mein khayal कैसे तुझको बनाया